Chen Long played both group matches. And Ben Beckman of England and Tommy Sugiato of Indonesia. He's undefeated so far. In fact, nobody's taken a game off him. But this a real pressure situation for Muhammad Hafiz Hashim. Must win situation. Odds are stacked against him, it has to be said. Chen Long, not only world number three, but such a physically strong athlete. And Hashim, at the age of 29, well, he's already left the national training setup, become an independent player, because his recent form has been judged to perhaps be on the way down, but certainly. We have seen glimpses in recent times of his utter brilliance, including yesterday in the group match against Denmark when he beat Hans Christian Wittinghus in three games. It was, of course, a, a dead match in that Malaysia already 3-1 up in the overall tie against... 3-1 down, I should say, against Denmark. So for Chen Long, the 23-year-old from Fujian province, former world junior champion, won the title back in 2007. Four titles last year, and so far this year, Chen Long, by his own very high standards, has been struggling a little. His win-loss record for the year translates into three semi-finals quarter-final and indeed a first round loss when he withdrew partway through the Korean Open first match that was. So to his opponent, Mohamed Hafiz Hashim from Kota Baru in Malaysia. Tall man, 188, that's about six foot two. And as you can see, while I was saying that his form of late has been questionable, his win-loss record for the year in the negative. And as you can see, this is the fifth meeting between these two players, and the only time that the Malaysian has won was, in fact, their very first meeting, which dates back to 2009. So three years on, and one has to say that the 23-year-old Chen Long has improved so much over the last three years. And given the fact that he's won the last three encounters, between these two players. Steen Peterson, former head coach of Denmark, you have to favour Chen Long in this. Yes, I uh, think that he's perhaps even the biggest favourite uh, we've seen yet in this match. Uh, Lin Dan, of course, was uh, another contender for that title, but um, Darren Lee, he, uh, he really played well. Uh, I think Chen Long is uh, highly motivated here and um, I know that uh, Mohamed Hafiz Hashim won that match against uh, Hans Christian Wittinghus, but um, I wasn't really impressed with uh, with his play there. I thought the pace was uh, not up to the standards that we've seen uh, Chen Long produce so far in this tournament. Mike Walker of Canada. China, represented by Chen Long. Girish Natu is our service judge from India. No, it's not some very positive fashion, does Hashim. You say that yesterday against Dietinghus didn't really play at the pace you, you would like to see him play Hashim. Has he, has he got to play more of an attacking style today? Or I would have thought that Chen Long is such a good athlete and he's such a good retriever of the shuttle. What sort of tactics should the Malaysian be using? Yeah, I think he, he should be patient, but he should try to take control of the rallies. Uh, I think... Chen Long is uh, 
quite a bit stronger in his defense than uh, Hafez is in, in his own. And um, therefore, he, he needs to, to try to control the match. But the problem is that Chen Long is such a good defensive player, so he will have to work really, really hard. And, and I'm not really sure that uh, that Mohamed Hashim is uh, capable of doing that. Uh, I read in the uh, Malaysian media that he had a small uh, foot injury didn't seem to bother him too much yesterday, but, um, but I don't think I see him beating Chen Long uh, if he's having an injury. No, I guess to beat any player ranked in the top four in the world, you really have to be at 100% full fitness. Oh, that's nice. Of course, Chen Long, last year's World Championships, day one, it was probably one of the biggest upsets of the whole tournament. Chen Long, who was the number five seed, lost in the very first round to Kevin Corden of Guatemala. Having had three match points but failed to convert, that was the big talking point. And that, 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 that match is going to haunt him for a very long time. Yeah, so that when you say Chen Long and... and and sort of uh, discuss him as a contender for titles. You're in the same sentence, say, Kevin Corden. Yeah. But I have to say, the way he responded after that particular defeat, the uh, next three tournaments he played, he won. And they were all Super Series events. Now, that's the sign of a great champion, the way they fight back after a disappointment. Yes, exactly. And, and it's uh, perhaps um, one out of 20 of these matches that that he lost here and, and I think he'd much rather lose it at the Worlds than at the Olympics in uh, a few months. Yeah. And we don't know, he might have been ill, he might have been sick. Uh, it's just notable because we didn't expect it to happen against uh, Kevin Corden and, and we also have to give Kevin Corden that he played a, an excellent match. Oh, he played a blinder, it was absolutely magnificent. Four straight points. Wen Xian lending her support. wide and of course Mohammed Hafiz Hashim's great Five, moment I suppose three. winning the All England Championship back in 2003 as an unseeded player and beat the then world number one Chen Hong in the final but never really built on that wonderful result never seemed to really fulfill his undoubted potential no it was like it was such a big thing for uh, Malaysia to uh, finally, after 37 years, 37 years draft, they got an uh, All England champion, and um, yeah, it takes character to to win one, but it also takes character to get over winning one, especially if you uh, experience a lot of um, fortune and fame, which I'm sure Hafiz Hashim did back in Malaysia. Yeah. Well, seven straight points now. 
even though uh, Chen Long has been dominant uh, so far uh, after trailing 3-0, we have to give it to Hafiz that uh, he's playing at a better pace today and of course uh, the thing that uh, the match was decided yesterday I think played an important role in, in the match we saw him play against uh, Viting Hoos, trying to save energy for this match. One of the explanations um, that uh, Hafiz has uh, dropped quite a bit in the rankings is that he actually, <laughs> I, I think he's playing a lot like when he won the All England title, but it's just nine years ago now, so he hasn't really been able to develop his game, and it's of course also difficult because he's such a tall player. Just explain that a little bit more. Why is it? difficult as a tall player to develop a game or or improve get a little quicker is it yeah he, he sort of he could easily get a little bit quicker yeah um, practicing a little bit harder perhaps but um, his, his style is the way I, I see it quite controlling and and um, he needed desperately to improve his defense and his Five. movements in the defense and he's it seems that he's not very um, explosive so to speak in his defense and uh, I know that sounds strange but um, but when you're in the when you're in the defense you need to move really fast yes, and Hafiz is much better moving fast from a more upright position Oh, it's found the back line. Great length. For the viewers at home, it could be a good experience to try to watch the two players footwork, see the how quickly they recover. Yes, and perhaps the contrast between the two men. Charles Ranger, former world champion, coach there. He was a great defensive player, wasn't he? Charles Ranger, world champion in 2003. And the championships were played in Birmingham, Birmingham, but I think you probably remember those world championships for a different reason, because of a men's doubles pair from Denmark taking the gold medal. Lars Borska and Jonas Rasmussen, of course. That, that was a fantastic tournament. Also, um, it's, it's uh, quite funny to think that uh, it was also in 2003 that uh, Hafiz won his uh, All England title. And uh, Shear is now coaching while Fizz is still playing on. So what level would he have if he'd still been playing? 11, yeah. play. I think only four or five months in between these two tournaments. Seven's over. Six. 
He actually beat another Malaysian player in the final back then. Wong Chun Han. Oh, that's just delightful. What a super shot. Reverse slice, straight drop from Chen Long. And look at her first legs. Oh, it takes a lot of time to move in the right direction here. Yes, in fact, he almost seemed to take a backward step, didn't he, instead of just exploding towards the shuttle. You see Chen Long, he's, he's not a small player, approximately the same height as uh, her fist, but uh, you can see from his leg muscles that he's just so strong. He will be able to take most of these deceptions, to absorb them quite quickly and then move in the right direction. Yeah, exactly the same shot. The reverse slide straight drop, once again doing the damage. Well, 14 of 17 points. Beautiful smash there from the fist. Two victories over Lee Chong Wei at the end of last year for Chen Long. Here's the golden opportunity. And, and Chen Long forces these kind of errors with his playing style, never giving up, retrieving a lot of smashes, a lot of smashes that you think you've won and it's all coming back, so you want to play as accurate as possible, and sometimes you try a little too much. Just wide. Well, appears to me as if 
Uh, Fifth Hashim is already in this opening game beginning to run out of ideas. Nobody likes losing the decisive match, and uh, I'm afraid that's what uh, Hafiz is going to do tonight. Can't help thinking how different his playing style is from his brother's. If you sort of could combine these two, then uh, you'd have an excellent player. Yes, of course, his brother, Rosalind Hashim, former world number one. Number one seed at the Seville. World Championships. 2001. Yep. Judgment. Seven's over. Nine. Seventeen. Well, he was helped by the luck of the net cord, badly deflected the shuttle and made the defence very awkward for Hafiz. But he's just so solid within the rally, isn't he, Chen Long? It's very rarely that he gives away three points to his opponents. He's got such good shot quality. And very rarely that you get him out of position either. Recovery is so quick. We also must say that Hafiz has played much better today than, than we saw him yesterday. So, had the match against uh, Witting, who's been a decisive match, I, I fear for Denmark that we would have gotten the same result as we got yesterday, just in another way. Yes, so it would have been two, two going into that third men's singles rather than 3-1 in Denmark's favour. You're saying that perhaps Denmark could have ended with a loss 3-2 instead of a win 3-2. I'm afraid so because I think that uh, Witting who's played uh, not his best but uh, the best he could yesterday given his uh, late back injury and his late arrival here in uh, Wuhan. Very, very. Oh! Nice to see that in uh, slow. See yeah. if the umpire was correct. Well, he called a fault, but I think he called a fault on Hafiz having touched the shuttle. He wasn't calling a fault on Chen Long. Yeah, you're right. Chen Long is getting ready to serve. Perfect example in that rally of the recovery of Chen Long using those powerful legs when seemed to be off balance to immediately get himself back in position. And that great movement and great retrieving. And even though he was so much under pressure, he still managed to get a quality shot back. Yeah. Almost at the baseline. Game points. Okay. And one will do. 
Well, considering that he lost the first three points of the match, as soon as he was into his stride, really looking very impressive, Chen Long. 20 minutes for that opening game, 21-10. There's another former world champion doing the coaching, Hendro One. Won the world title in Seville. When Hafiz Hashim's brother was the number one seed. Hendro One, representing Indonesia, won the gold medal. Beating Peter Gale in the final, so we got a couple of old timers in this tournament. 17-16 in the second game, if I remember correctly. That's correct. 15-6, 17 16. Oh better in all departments, Chen Long. And I wonder what Hendron, Hendron was saying to, uh, to her face here, because I wouldn't really know what to say either, and just uh, do your best and uh, just keep going. Uh, I know a funny a funny uh, coaching conversation in Denmark Open when um, Mohamed uh, Hashim was on his way to beating uh, Mark Zwiebler. Um, it was 11-4 in, in the decider and uh, apparently Hendron said to um, Hafiz, just uh, keep going, keep going until 16 and then you're home safe. And Hafiz did as told, proceeded till 16-4 and then lost. And Mark Zwiebler went on to go into the final of uh, Denmark Open, where he eventually lost to, I think it was Peter Gale. I think he lost to Simon Santoso, actually. Yeah, you're right. But in all seriousness, though, Steen, I mean, uh, is it a dilemma for a coach? It, is, there, is there a point where you say, watching a match like this that actually Hafiz hasn't any longer got the capabilities and the physical uh, speed and strength to match Chen Long that you really as a coach don't believe he can win anyway and therefore what do you say to the player? Yeah, it's uh, sort of uh, keeping up appearances um, it's really difficult, really really difficult Because he doesn't, probably doesn't even himself, himself believe that he can um, can win this match. Something um, extraordinary must happen. Like yesterday when Li Chong Wei twisted his ankle against oh, uh, Peter Gerrit. Heavens forbid! Please no, not another injury. But I know I understand exactly what what you mean. You've always got to keep fighting because something like that could happen and then you know then the match is yours but had it been 2-0 for Malaysia and Chen Long was under some kind of uh, mental pressure it would have been another case but um, Two, one. I can't really see what what should sort of trigger his uh, eventual mental downfall here He's playing an excellent matchup. Is everything just keeps coming back?
think court is going to need to be mopped of the perspiration. Rarely shows much emotion, this man from Malaysia. Whereas I remember Chen Long, when he beat Li Chong Wei in the final of the Japan Open last year, ripped his shirt off, jumped over the advertising boards, rushed over to his coach. There could, of course, be uh, differences in uh, personality, but um, I also think that it illustrates quite well the... Uh, the desire to win and the different positions in the, in their career. They're simply at uh, two different stages. Uh, Chen Long is on his way to his best moments and um, Hafiz is um, yeah, on his way to retirement. Yeah. But that's not to say that he doesn't have every desire to win this particular encounter. I'm sure that his motivation do well in the Thomas Cup, just as high as ever. But I think players get to a stage when, you know, you've won the major titles, he's won the All England, he was Commonwealth Games gold medalist, you know, he he probably knows in his own mind he'll never achieve those sort of things again so it's not so much it's easy as a player to come to a major championship like this and your motivation's right up there but the problem is the day-to-day -day, week in week out month in month out training hard every day that's where it gets so tough I'm smiling a little bit here in the commentator seat because I feel like you're reading my mind When you're standing in there, you really want to win, but yeah. it's when you see everyday hard work. And I'm pretty sure that Chen Long is working much, much harder every day than Professor Shin does. Yeah. just experiment with the thought that, um, that we were being put in charge, you and I, for uh, Hafiz Hashim tomorrow to coach him the next five years towards Rio. He will only be 34. That's uh, less than Peter Gere's age at the moment. So one of the first things that we should do was to sort of uh, create in his mind a belief, convey an idea of how he was going to play so that he could gain more in the future than, than he'd done in his career so far. That would be absolutely necessary unless we were capable of that. It would be a hopeless task to try and improve him dramatically. Not to say that it couldn't be done, because I've seen it with uh, a Danish player, a quite famous one actually, Paul Eric Hoyer, who at a time in his career had fallen behind Thomas Stuhl Lauritsen and uh, was the Danish number two, and then sort of got revived, and after that winning a lot of international titles and of course the Olympic gold medal in uh, in 96 so it can be done absolutely and prior to that Olympic title we won two all Englands back to back 95 and 96 I think it was I think you would have more of a problem so with Hafiz
Yeah, I think you're right, Jill, and it's definitely not a job application. <laughs> Nothing you can do against that lock of the net cord favouring Chen Long. Well, he had a little look at it, knew in the end that he should have played it, because it landed calm on the line. Has a little look, look, he actually tries to play it in the end. Yeah, I think it was partly judgment, partly hope that he decided to let that one fall. Concerning body language for all Malaysian fans from Hashim after that error on the net reply. Six straight points from Chen Long. Seven straight points from Chen Long. Now the four point six point advantage. like he's still giving Hafiz some tactical advice. I wonder what they might be. Well, things looking very much in China's favour at the moment. Of course, two love up in the overall time. Best of five matches. And of course, from quarterfinals onwards, we don't contest the dead matches within the tie so if Chen Long was to push home here push home his advantage and actually win this second men's singles then China would be secure of a semi-final berth once again in the Thomas Cup in fact since China first entered this competition back in 1982 they have always reached at least the semi-final and if they win this tie, it will be their 16th consecutive Thomas Cup semi-final. That really is quite a record. Also quite remarkably that we will have lost both Malaysia and uh, Indonesia before the semi-finals. Yeah, we'll have to check the record books and see if that's ever happened before. I'm not sure it has. Sort of um, Japan has introduced itself into uh, the top badminton nations. Yes, and in fact, Japan awaits the winner of this corner final tie because Japan beat Indonesia earlier today. It's 3 2. Oh, that's a magnificent backhand.
And we saw Hendrum and um, coaching in the in the interval uh, between the sets and uh, in the break here. But um, <coughs> I don't think he's the regular coach of uh, Fischer-Shim. Uh, I think he's uh, independent. Yes, that's right. Fiz Hashim is an F Badminton Association of Malaysia. Competes independently. That's, that's a bit of a sign the way I see it because we know there's some independent players from Indonesia as well and uh, oh what a great rally this one is. Oh, he said it long. Yes, but uh, I think what's very interesting about Hafiz Hashim, and despite the fact that he's an independent player, when Malaysia were competing in the Axiata Cup recently, he was very vocal about the fact that Malaysia didn't act well enough as a team. And therefore, he urged all of his fellow Malaysian players that they really had to get together for the Thomas Cup. And in response to that, Badminton Association of Malaysia organized a, not only a training camp, but a team building camp in Guangzhou. All the players came to China and trained in Guangzhou before coming here to Wuhan. And this sort of illustrates what we were talking about earlier, that it's too little, too late. Yeah. The work that has brought China to this position hasn't been done during the last month, even during the last year. It's a very, very long-term commitment. Uh, indecision at the back of the court, costing him dear. I think we have yet to see independent players performing to the standards they had when they were actually members of uh, the national team. Or perhaps I should say consistently performing to the level they had when they were members of the national team because we've seen glimpses from Taufik, from Kido and Sechevan. But the consistency is gone. This is a lovely smash. And it could be interesting to see uh, statistics on smash returns. How many has Chen Long returned and how many has Hafiz Hashim been able to get back over the net? I think there's quite a big difference. and I suspect that error on that last smash from Hafiz Hashim the fact that he felt he had to go for the line because otherwise Chen Long would indeed have got it back. It's so amazing that he's able to play with that quality under so much pressure, Chen Long. Yeah, incredible. Two or three times in that rally, I thought he was way out of position, was going to be in trouble. And as you say, somehow doesn't just get it back, he gets it back with interest, and then his recovery back to be ready for the following shot is just incredible. Mentally, I guess Chen Long just wears down opponents. 
start to think to yourself, well, how on earth do I win a rally? What have I got to do? rally time and time again Chen Long waits for the right opportunity before he tries playing his smash and on a run of five straight points now with an eight-point advantage respite from the pressure. I'm thinking back a little bit to the interval where it seemed like Hendron was still giving tactical advice and I feel that it doesn't make any sense to give tactical advice in this situation because it's clearly that this match is decided on physical skills level and to have a chance here, Hafiz simply needed to improve his skills level in, in the physique uh, department, so to speak. Well, China now just three points away from a third point in the overall tie and therefore victory and a place in the semi-final. drifts along of that back line. Does keep looking down at his hand, doesn't he, Chen Long? I wonder if he's grazed himself with one of those dives. Oh. Shuffle hit his head so great about the development in, in badminton that in the beginning when Lin Dan started these diving retrieval of smashes he was the only one doing it and now every top player in, in the top 10 is doing them because it's just a natural part of the game now Well, he's had a few of those today. Lucky neck cords. But now China on the verge of yet another semi-final place in the Thomas Cup. way long comprehensive victory in the end for China after what has to be said a little bit of a wobbly start with the first men's singles but Li Yongbo goes and shakes hands with the Malaysians while his man Chen Long secures his victory over Mohammed Hafiz Hashim 21-10 21-11 in 46 minutes. Almost as if he changed his mind on that final shot, Hashim. So confirmation of the score, 21-10, 21-11 and three love for China 
in this quarter final of the Thomas Cup. Congratulated by coaches Lee Yong Bo and teammates. The remaining matches within the tie will, of course, not now be contested. And looking at the match statistics, well, better in all departments, really. Chen Long, more than twice as many overhead winners, commanding the nets. And as Steen Peterson was pointing out, Hashim just not the physicality to be able to cope with so much attacking play and so much great movement by Chen Long. that confirms the fact that China will be in the semi-final once more. Three love victory over Malaysia taking the first three matches. The first men's singles though going the full distance and that was a huge surprise to many of the spectators that Darren Liu took the opening game against world and Olympic champion Lin Dan but order was restored and he came back strongly in three games. Well there you can see that they will indeed play Japan in the semi-final. That will be Friday, the semi-finals for the Thomas Cup. One more place in the semi-final yet to be decided, but as you can see, Korea at the moment two love up against Germany. So that to be decided who takes on Denmark in the bottom half of the draw in the semi-finals. <laughs> 